Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and isn't this a pretty Yardbirds concert poster from early 1968, the year, of course, they would morph, at least with a guitarist, into Led Zeppelin. But here we have Santa Barbara, California, just a couple of months before the Yardbirds' last gig ever. They had been together, of course, out of England for several years. May 10th of 1968, Jimmy Page on guitar and the Yardbirds. Interesting the way um, Salser's, uh, Jim Salser was the promoter here. His poster artist, Frank Betancourt, used such a nice medley of pastel colors. I just really like it. I think it's really sweet and even a, a bit soft, and that's okay. Can, you know, when compared to all the, the loud ones, it's nice to have one like this. Just a beautiful use of pink, yellow, blue, orange, and green. I just really like it. I think it's very colorful. I think it's really nice. In the white margin, or the white border, I should say, say up there at the top, it does say presented in Santa Barbara by Casey, meaning radio, K-A-C-Y, and Jim Salzer. I kind of like the way the moon is looking sideways over the Yardbirds' name on this. I, I think that's a nice touch. I think that's pretty cool. So the Yardbirds, with Jimmy Page, of course, were winding down their final tour, and uh, Led Zeppelin would get together and play their first gigs in December of 1968, led, of course, by the esteemed Mr. Page. Other acts on the poster, well, you see their rather busy name there, they're on the poster. Um, sick fans of 60s AM radio probably at least passingly familiar with the name of Dave D, Dozy, Beaky, Mick, and Titch. Um, you know, they, uh, they had one semi-hit on a national basis, Zabadak, but never really broke through in America. But it's interesting, by playing, by um, trying to play here on the West Coast, they hardly could have picked a less popular place of the world for them to appear because they were pretty, they were significantly bigger, shall we say, in the northeast part of America and huge internationally. So they probably didn't garner much of a following out here on the west coast, although Zabadak was a hit in Los Angeles. Um, but, uh, you know, in fact, there's, there are reports that um, Dave D, etc., did not show, just didn't come to the concert. And then also down below them in the yellow, uh, yellow area, shall we say, is Turquoise. And they're also from England. And a matter of fact, Turquoise was close associates and friends with the Kinks. And the Kinks' Dave Davies actually produced their first demos. And Turquoise had a couple of singles out on DECA this year, but unfortunately, they didn't do anything. So um, I guess I could have easily said earlier this all-British bill, because all three of those acts are from England, but it's not really an all-British bill, because reportedly um, a new Los Angeles band calling themselves Three Dog Night were paid $300 to make the 90-minute drive up the coast and join the show, perhaps to fill in for Dave D. and company. So, boy, I don't need to say what kind of uh, heights Three Dog Night would go on to as far as record sales for the next five, six, seven years. They would just smoke up the charts, that's for sure. Then down at the poster, you have um, sort of an afterthought almost, certainly a seemingly innocent there, very understated Earl Warren, May 10. And, you know, again, Salser liked to have his poster artist be understated instead of Earl Warren showgrounds and all that stuff, and instead of, you know, the day of the week in May 10, uh, maybe the year, whatever, and all that. It's just four words, but they actually play a key role in the poster. I'll show you why in a second. And then, in the white margin down below that, you've got five locations to buy tickets in surrounding communities of Oxnard, Ventura, Thousand Oaks, Santa Barbara, and Goleta. So, if you're a poster collector and you want to get one that was made before the show to sell tickets or part of that printing, how do you tell the difference? Well, luckily there is a very um, simple way to tell the difference between the one that Saucer printed before the show to post around town and so forth, and all of the many afterprints that came years later as he put them in his stores uh, for sale. He owned a, um, Jim Saucer's Music Emporium, was a chain of record stores in the area, again north of Los Angeles, and through mail order as well. And what comes into play is that Earl Warren May 10th down there I just mentioned, okay? Now on the original, the one in my hand, it's three and a half inches wide. Um, and on the repro, it's four inches wide. So that's a good half an inch. You don't need a micrometer to mention that. Um, also on the repro, it's of a heavier type. They changed the font is what they did. And what that also results in is that um, the second blue dot there, move in a little closer, is under the 10 of May 10. See that? And on the repro, it does not appear under the 10. So that's your tell. If you want a poster made before the show, it's uh, three and a half inches and blue dot under 10. If you're happy with just any pretty repro to put on your wall, then 
<laughs> you don't have those two features. Um, also, another interesting tell, if you will, notice that under the moon, bump something here, um, under the moon there's a, a wide stripe there that's sort of the merging of orange and pink colors. I should just really point it out to make this simple here and change hands. I'm talking about right here. Um, they just sort of like merge under the moon and they look pretty nice. Well, for some reason, who knows why, but on all after printings, that zigzag line was added there. Let me shuffle this around a little bit. I hope you can see it pretty clearly. Um, look at that. Yeah, zigzag line separating the orange and the pink underneath the moon. If you've got that zigzag line, you definitely, it's another way to tell beside the Earl Warren May 10 that you have an after printing. But as you can see, they did the, actually, the, I was going to say they did the colors right, but the colors are even slightly different. And uh, I won't crutch it any further than to hide my mug, which is a win right there, and just show them to you side by side. <laughs> so, uh, there you have it, the Yardbirds, not long before calling it a day and morphing into Led Zeppelin, led by Jimmy Page, who led, I suppose, both groups, the Yardbirds and Led Zepp. And uh, so it's a, it's a really beautiful pastel poster from Southern California in 1968, and just a real sweet one. So, hope you enjoyed seeing it. It was fun showing it to you. Thanks for dropping by, and uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.